So you've been invited to talk at your very first conference. Because you've never done one of these before, there can be a lot to think about. How do you structure your talk, get the timing and pacing right, or answer audience questions? Many conferences are now completely online and you also need to figure out video, audio, slides, for this completely different medium of communication. If it's your first time here, my name is Jack Wang and I'm an Associate Professor in Microbiology at the 2020 Australian University Teacher of the Year. In this video, I will talk through five tips for how to give an engaging online presentation. And I will show you how I put these principles into practice. It's very important that you appear to be talking to someone, whether it be directly into the camera, so you're talking to the audience, or you're talking to someone that's just off camera in a style that's very common in interview style documentaries. And if you don't have your webcam or camera set up correctly, it will seem like you're talking to someone above camera, so it'll look a little weird, or it seems like you're talking to someone that's below camera. Right now, I'm talking right into the camera. Hopefully you can see that there's a line of sight. It feels like I'm talking to you. Hopefully it feels pretty comfortable and it feels quite personal. That's the first to get right. Do you want to see like you're talking to someone off camera in a documentary style? Then you can stand a little bit like this so that there's quite a bit of space between you and the rest of the frame. And now I'm not looking at the camera anymore. I'm looking just off camera and it seems like I'm talking to someone off camera. So if someone's asked me a question, oh, that's very interesting. I'm talking back and forth. It still looks pretty natural even though I'm not looking right at the camera. If you have enough space and equipment, recording with two camera angles simultaneously is a nice to have, not a must have. It allows you to cut out the pauses and hide the cut by switching angles. Just a nice to have because with one angle, you can always use jump cuts and do a small zoom in and out. This takes practice, but it can still seem quite natural. Looking off camera can work well if you're looking in the same direction as a graphic or text on screen. If you're presenting slides, you can shrink your face to the corner of the window for some extra visual interest. Lastly, for video, let's focus on controlled lighting. Soft LED lighting works best, but buying lights can become very expensive very quickly. To start with, just focus on using your normal room lighting and natural light to make your face bright enough on screen. Try to ensure that the lighting doesn't change sporadically throughout the video. Natural window lighting is great for faces, but it will change throughout the Day. Try to finish recording a video before the light changes. Tip number two is sound. I'm by no means a sound expert or audio engineer. I can just tell you what I found out through many, many failed attempts at getting good quality sound. There are two principles. The first principle is to get any microphone you're using as close as possible to you. And the second tip is to record in a space which has minimal background noise, vibration, or the capacity for your sound to bounce off hard surfaces. So in this empty lecture theater, it's quite a big space. Thankfully, there's carpet. There is a little bit of soundproofing in lecture theater, so it's not too bad. At this point, you can tell that the sound quality is quite different in the lecture theater than here in this small space. Despite all of the sound editing and post-production I've done, it is very hard to change the sound signature to the big empty lecture theater. It is always best to get it right before you hit record and choose the right recording location right from the jump. The best possible place, especially if you're giving an online conference presentation, in your bedroom, because there is lots of clothes around that will dampen the sound. Your microphone can be very close and the microphone can be your laptop microphone, phone microphone, your lavalier microphone. Any of these microphones will work fine if it is very close to you. The space you're in is not going to bounce the sound back to you. It's gonna absorb the sound as much as possible and it just gives you that richer recording. If your presentation is pre-recorded, you may consider scripting your talk, which oddly enough impacts on your sound quality as well. Most people's reading voice sounds different than their talking voice. I'll give you an example. Right now, I'm reading this text off a teleprompter and this is my normal reading voice much more formal, less conversational, and it takes quite a bit of training to sound natural while reading a script. With practice over time, I can make this sound quite natural. I can vary the pace, change the intonation in my voice, but this takes a lot of work. Instead, I would recommend practicing your talk using visual aids like PowerPoint slides, which prompt you to talk about the points on screen in a looser, more natural delivery style. You're much more likely to sound relaxed rather than robotic. Being unscripted does mean you will make mistakes, but you can fix it. This ties nicely into tip three, editing. I cannot stress this enough. You need to be the best editor of your own work. And editing can come from two perspectives. You need to have gone through a practice of talk many times. Do not rely on typing your notes out and never presenting it. Stand up, present it properly. You can very quickly hear if something sounds a bit silly to you and that self-editing process will improve over time. If this is your first conference presentation, then likely it's three to five minutes. You should be able to practice it at least 10 times and it's still less than an hour worth of practice. The other step is going to be editing after the fact, especially if this conference presentation is delivered via a video. Know how to use editing software. So that could be video editing, audio editing, the video editor that is really powerful powerful and it's free is one called DaVinci Resolve. The key thing here is that you can edit out where you've stuffed up. There are a lot of resources online on the internet to learn how to do this. Invest the time to learn how to edit your own work. My fourth 
one tip is to be ready. And that encompasses a lot of things. But the key here is that your conference presentation should not be the last one you give. It should be the first of many. Have your LinkedIn, have your professional networking accounts set up. If you leave every presentation with one genuine contact that will give you some other opportunity to collaborate, that counts as a success. The other part of this is you have to be ready to accept the invitation. You don't have a good talk title already. You don't have your speaker bio. You don't have a good photo of yourself. All these are things that people just expect you to have. This ties nicely to my last tip, which is uh, remaining open to change. So the first level is that when you're giving a talk, a lot of time you assume that people will try and test if what you found is real. You need to be ready to accept that you're wrong. And you need to be open to recommendations that can be hidden in the guise of a rather aggressive question coming from the crowd. And in fact, many of the most exciting projects I've done is with people who've asked me questions during seminars and conferences, I really expanded the scope of my work through those kinds of opportunities. So there it is, five tips for giving online talks. And these are things I need to consider every single day as part of my job as a teacher and an academic at a university. I've recently been invited to give a talk as part of the Briz Science Public Lecture Series, linked down in the description below. So let's walk through how I would prepare for this. Originally, this was going to be an in-person talk at The Edge, a beautiful venue at the State Library of Queensland in the Brisbane CBD. Then a snap lockdown happened in Queensland. Not the first, won't be the last. This is where tip four comes in, being ready. I was fully prepared to deliver an online talk and I sent through my website, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube accounts, and had a talk title, synopsis, photo, CV, all ready to go for an online event. For video, this is my setup. You can see a clear line of sight. The camera is at eye level. There's constant lighting and the background is not too distracting. For sound, this microphone looks very impressive, but the main thing is that I'm very close to it. I have headphones on to minimize audio feedback or interference. And this carpeted space I'm in is pretty small and absorbs sound quite well. The lecture will be live streamed, so I can't edit it after the fact. However, the self-editing beforehand will be the preparation I do. I practice a talk within an inch of its life and I know all the slides, what I'll say to each of the visual prompts to the point where I can improvise a little on the day and it will still make sense. I've timed it very carefully down to the minute while allowing some time for questions. All that's left is for me to deliver the talk and take the last tip to heart, remaining open to change through interactions with the audience. I'm always a little nervous, keen to engage with everyone who attends and looking forward to question time. That's always the most informative part of every talk I've given. By the time you're watching this, I would have already given the lecture. I'm hoping that it went well. I will link the video in the description below so you can judge for yourself. This is the Biolab Collective. I'm Jack Wang, and I'll see you in the next video.